you know, a couple weeks now working with the O-line in spring. Just how's the group uh, gelled so far? A couple new guys. Good. Now. You know, they're, um, they're all working. Right now what we're doing is we're trying to see who can play, not necessarily who the best five are. Uh, our job is to find out who, who can uh, do what we ask them to do in the run game, who can do in the, in the pass protection, and then at, at a later date, we'll worry about gelling those guys in into five, eight, nine, ten guys, right? So what, what we, Coach Cristobal and I, what we're looking at now is, you know, who can we trust? Like, who can we trust to play um, in a game against another opponent, right? So our job is how, to, to get as many of those guys as we can to trust, right? Right now we feel we've got maybe eight, nine of them, that we could trust to go in. And when I say trust, I'm talking about that they're going to know what to do, why to do, and how to do it on every single play. It's not, hey, can I trust them with my wallet or my keys? <laughs> That's not the type of trust we're talking about, right? Because we trust them in, all, in, in them, all of them in that, those aspects of it. It's more, we're just trying to get as many guys that we can trust that will be able to play in a, in, in a game. How, how do you, I mean, when you, get, when you get to that point, how do you get to that um, point where everyone just jelly together? Because last year's O-line, they played together every game. They seemed like they had very good yeah, Because they were tough. So when, when guys show up every game and play every game, it's not because they're lucky. It's because they're tough. Because trust me, every, all five of those guys at some point in the season were injured, were hurt, and were beat up. But they chose to play for each other. To me, that's, that's what toughness is. Toughness is that you show up every single day for practice and for games, uh, regardless of how your body feels. Right? So, uh, and then our job as, as coaches, okay, these are the guys that we can trust. How do we get the best five out of that to go compete? Who yes, ma'am. Still has been um, stepping up as far as leadership-wise. Anes Cooper, Anes Cooper, and Jalen Rivers. I think Anes Cooper has been uh, the the transformation that that young man has done since he came on campus um, three years ago with his hair down over his eyes because he was you know wasn't confident speaking to people and just the way he he is right now. He's transformed his body. He's transformed his look. His hair. He's transformed his his. his his physique from a, almost a 400 pound man to a 338 pound man, you know, his confidence, his leadership, all that. And that stuff that, uh, you know, um, with, with j -Bo and, and Matt uh, going to the next level, other guys got now, they get to grow, right? Sometimes it's hard to grow in the shade. You know, when you cut the, sh the shrubbery out, now here comes the sun and other guys can grow. And he's one of those guys that has grown in that manner. And, and then I think Jalen Rivers, he's, you know, he's one of those, he's just a steady guy. You know, he's the quiet guy, the one no one ever talks about, the one everybody wants to move to different positions, but he's always there. You know, so um, Coop, is, Coop is a little more, more of, the, of the vocal leader. Uh, and and Jalen is more of hey this is how you you know this is the example guy you know in terms of that so they're both lead but in their own style and in their own personality which is which is awesome to see for me I take as much pride in how they grow as young men and as how they grow as leaders as how they grow as a right guard or as a left tackle. With Jalen being left tackle like yeah. year over year, how yeah. big is that for his development? You know what it's awesome right because you can you can stay in one spot right when you could stay in one spot you you. You, you get to work out the kinks. You know, now, today, he ended up, we, we, he slid into left guard today and we'll keep sliding him around because at the end of the day, I owe it to him and his future, uh, that versatility, right? To me, that, that's a great thing because wherever he ends up going, hey, you're going to be a left guard now or you're going to be a right guard. And shame on me if I haven't prepared him for that. Everybody thinks it's easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to be in a left-handed stance and all of a sudden, hey, you're, you're on the right side. It's completely different. It's like doing everything left-handed, right-handed, right? So we continue with that versatility. But yeah, is it nice if, you know, for him to be able to be in one spot and, and just kind of grow there? Yeah, and the other reason, you know, we're kind of keeping him at left, guard, left tackle for the most part right now and Coop at right guard for the most part right now just because it also helps the other guys grow. It also helps the other guys grow. It helps whoever we have at left guard. It helps them grow when, when Jalen's next to him, right? Today, I, we slid Jalen into left guard and we put Markel Bell at left tackle. Why? Because it's going to help Markel Bell grow as a left tackle when you're next to a, a, a vet like that. And the vet will just look at you and say, hey, you got him. You know what I'm saying? That kind of deal. So that's another thing that I, th I don't think a lot of times people factor in, right? So when, when Inez Cooper's playing right guard and Zach's at center or Ryan's at center like they both were today with the ones, right, them being next to Coop helps them grow, right? Coop at right guard, and, and then you've got um, Samson at right tackle. You've got Matt McCoy at right tackle. You've got Bruno at right tackle. All taking reps with the ones. They grow because they're next to a vet like Coop. And I think that that's what's important. That's what I get lost in. I know all the fans and the media, they want to know who's starting. I don't care about that. I care about finding guys that we as a program can trust so that they can roll. You know, And that to me is huge.
about Samson. Sorry. Sorry. Talk about Samson. You know what? Samson's been awesome. Samson's been a guy who got hurt. I don't remember what week he got hurt last year, uh, but he got hurt last year and uh, hurt his knee. And he's a guy that in rehab, he wanted to play more than he wanted to be hurt. So that drove him to rehab. Best guy I've ever been around in my 18 years coaching in college of, of rehabilitation and just wanting to come back because it means that much to him, right? And he's, everybody says, hey, what? Well, he don't care. He's out there, he's like a kid at Christmas because he's able to play football again. And it don't matter, he's right now, he's taking reps at, le today he took reps at left tackle, left guard, and right tackle, right? And it helps him. Any rep he takes at left guard is gonna help him as a left tackle. Any reps he takes at left tackle is gonna help him as a right tackle. So that's what we're lost in. As, as, a, as a football program, they're, they're, we, we have no depth chart, organizational chart, none of that. You don't got to give that till the Tuesday of the Florida week, right? So it's just something that he's just growing, and he's just happy that he's back to playing football, and he's having a great time doing it. But uh, just a determined young man to be able to come back. Is he close, though, to being one of the five? Uh, you know, one of he's, the five he's close to being one of the guys that we trust. Yeah, how about that? How, how has he adjusted? Well, I don't recruit anybody as nothing. Okay. And you, if you ever sat in my room, I'll tell the recruits that I recruit you as, are you an offensive lineman or you're a right guard? You're an offensive lineman. Why do I tell them that? If you're an offensive lineman, you've got five opportunities to play. If you only say, I'm only a right tackle, guess what? you got one opportunity. That's foolish on your part. At the end of the day, these kids want to play on the field, right? Jalen Rivers was a left tackle in high school. Um, Samson Okonola was a left tackle in high school. Francis Mauinoa, left tackle in high school. Anes Cooper, tackle in high school. Matt McCoy, tackle in high school. They're all tackles. Well, you all can't be left tackles, right? So you got to play a specific spot. The best off at the tackle in the NFL right now was Panay Sewell. He was a right tackle in high school, right? When he came to us at the other place that we were at, we had a right tackle start at 54 games. Hey, Panay, you got to go play left side. But I don't know. Go play left side. Gets drafted in the first round, he's back to right tackle. Right? So at the end of the day, they're offensive linemen. They're not tackles, they're not guards, they're not centers. They are what they are, you know. So we don't pigeonhole them, and they don't pigeonhole themselves. I know the media, the fans, you guys get lost in that. The program, the players, they don't, which is fantastic. How does that look a veteran at quarterback like Cam Phenomenal. Like Man, he is our program today. We are more physical, and we are tougher, and we have a, a chip on our shoulders because that's who our quarterback is. Our quarterback is tough, he is physical, and he's got a chip on our shoulder, and the rest of the program feeds off of it, right? So those guys up front, I mean, they feed off of it. I know a lot of people, you know, that what he did, taking all those guys out to dinner, he won them jokers now, right? So those guys, they, they love Cam, the defense loves Cam, um, and like I said, he's just a, I mean, I love him. I love him because I love what he's about. He's an honorary old lineman, He's got that edge to him, and because of that, those guys are going to battle and fight for him. He's like that. Reese has got an edge to him. Emery's tough as hell. Judd is tough. Uh, JB. So we got a tough quarterback room. Typically, those guys, you would, you would think that they're the anti that. These guys are all that. So it's been awesome, and, and he's good. You know, he's a vet. He's got, he, he don't get flustered. You know, he's a vet. He's, he's been in the, un, under the fire and stuff like that. And, you know, we're trying to help him understand our protection scheme and stuff, but he's been fantastic. Love being around that, that young man, and, and I know the offensive line loves him. Coach, uh, Mar questions. Markel is a big, big bell. Big, what do you call him? Big bell. Big bell. He's yeah. very large. Yes. Um, when people see a guy like that, yeah. do you think they have assumptions that either he's going to be really, really good because he's really, really big, yeah. or maybe the other way, he's going to be clumsy or something? Well, like he's really, really big. He's really, really good, and he's going to be really, really good for the Canes, right? And he's a guy that um, he's almost 6'9", I believe, right? And he's like 325, 330 pounds, but he can bend his knees. He can move his feet. The best thing about Kel is Kel is tough, and he's a great listener, great listener. So he's gotten tremendously better. I know I just made that phrase up, but throughout the, the, our, our practices at, at Holmes Community College, he was coached. He went to Holmes because, not because he wasn't a qualifier, because he was. He went to Holmes because he wanted to get, quote unquote, better offers, right? So he went to Holmes. He was coached by a, their offensive line coach named Les George, who I've known for a while, who's a good football coach. So he comes with a background to him. And, you know, the, the question 
So then people usually ask, hey, have you ever played basketball, right? So yes, he has. So he's, a good, he's got good feet. He's got great length. It's not that he's tall, it's that he's long. He's got really long arms, and it's not the same. Um, but, but he's developing tremendously. He's another one of those kids like, like a Samson who's on the verge of earning our program's trust to be able to play. Would he benefit from a developmental year? Uh, I don't, we don't believe in developmental years here because of the fact that you, there's never a guarantee, right? So uh, we're going to win. We're going to win, and, and it's important for us to win now, right? So there's no, hey, save him for a year, save him for two years. You know, and you know how it goes. It, it, football has its own plan, right? God has his own plan. So he might have to play like tomorrow. That's my job. My job's not to, hey, he's got two years before he's got to play or he's got a year before he's got to play. My job is, my, my, my job, I'm hired to make sure that if Markel Bell has to play that first game that he's ready to go. You know what I'm saying? And I think if you have that attitude as a coach, you're going to help them grow. If your attitude is as a coach is, oh, he's got a year, then you're going to, well, you know what, we'll get to that. No, we're not going to get to that. You know, we're going to push the envelope with him uh, because, you know, every year is not going to be like last year. Every year is not going to be like last year where those five can ride for 12 games, you know. Uh, so we've got to make sure that, that those guys are ready. So that's not my mentality at all. That's not Kel's mentality at all. That's not Coach Cristobal's mentality at all. What does Carpenter show to this point? Ca Carpenter, um, toughness, leadership, um, veteran eyes, you know, a steadying presence inside, you know. Um, every day he gets better and better. You know, he, he, he started out at Michigan. Um, then went over to and started there, then went over to Indiana, started there for two years. Um, but a very, very bright young man. You know, he's a kid. I don't know if you guys see him, seen him, but he snaps left handed. He's really right handed, right? He's right handed where he tore his thumb two years ago at Indiana, right? And they moved him to guard and whoever was a center at Indiana was struggling. Whoever they put in for him was struggling. So after practice, he taught himself how to snap left handed, right? And then he two games later, he was back in starting left handed. So he's ambidextrous. You got to be smart to be able to do that, right? You got to be able to be flexible uh, mentally and physically. So that's what we got in Zach, you know? Um, and, and it's awesome. I, I'm, I'm fired up to see him grow. In his own way, he's done a good job of leadership too, right? And because of Coop and because of Jalen, he's been able to come in and just fit in and worry about, hey, four down, this, that, and the other, our, our communication instead of really having to be the one who rounds the group up and goes to watch film right now. Once he gets a spring under his belt, he'll be the one doing that. But he's been, he's been tremendous for us, and I'm fired up to see, see him continue to get better.